Hi, this is Anne with the second anagram in my series um, for how to code up these census statistics. So uh, I'm where I left myself off the last time. Um, I am in the process of working through one at a time step two here, where I am uncommenting these lines that call specific functions and then coming up here and having grabbed the code from the function outlines file, um, I have this code to work with. So um, let's just read this. We are supposed to find and return the state object, so not a number, but a state object with the maximum population of all the states in the input array. Okay, so we're given this input array, which we um, now have as a test. So let me come over here and fold up this and just get this out of the way. Uh, so we're supposed to walk through this test list, eventually the raw, well, the enhanced version of the test list that actually has the percentages, and um, go through it and look in this case for the highest value here. So um, I have some pseudocode here. Uh, we're, we're looping with an array, so the easiest way to do that is to write a for statement. Uh, yeah, I can't type this morning at all, okay. Um, so, some of you like to retype things, and um, I respect that. Uh, I would probably retype this one once because you do have a good example of it up here. Make sure that you've got it right. And then um, I would delete that and be sure to put the stuff we're supposed to do, the comments for what we're supposed to do, inside that loop. Now, First thing you always have to wonder is, is this loop gonna work or not? Because there are ways to get it wrong. And you certainly could forget to declare i, and it'll be an infinite loop. I'm not gonna demo the infinite loops. Um, you're gonna have to take my word for it because that's just gonna be distracting. Um, remember that this is shorthand for the completely legitimate, and I would be happy if you used it, i is equal to i, plus one, okay? Um, so you can use the shorthand contraction. You can use the long where we're adding one to i and then assigning it back. What you can't use is this. This adds one to i and then throws the result on the floor, never increments i and creates an infinite loop. Trust me on that, that if you're gonna use the i plus one, you absolutely positively need to assign the added value back into i, or this loop never ends. So most of us end up just getting used to typing that, um, and I recommend you do, but if you, for your own purposes, wanna be thinking about this, then um, you, know, you should feel free to do i equals i plus one. Now, one of the nice things about having um, a short array to work with is that um, you can test your loops. Um, I've seen several problems lately where people are wondering why their code isn't working inside the loop, and for one reason or another, simply their loop is never um, implementing. So, for example, um, let's just let's just do a couple of examples. Um, so, feel free anytime you write a loop to log something, to tell you how many times. Um, okay. it, it never hurts to get the code to just plain talk to you. Okay, so we're down here, we're in the loop, and we're running four times with indexes zero, one, two, and three. Okay. Um, but it's easy to screw this up. So I saw one the other day that was like this. Um, it was just a simple misspelling of, of length. 
even though you know your, your IDE may be trying to tell you length, you may not notice that. And if you do that, length is an undefined property, and i is apparently never less than that. Let's see if that's true. It's either an infinite loop. Yeah. See how if I just simply spell the length property wrong, I never see this line come out. And if I never see that line come out, I know that my loop is not running. So it's easy to get this wrong. So trust yourself, but feel free to verify and make sure that when you write the for loop, you're actually going to be walking through each entry in your array. That's the most basic thing you can do for yourself. Okay. So now inside this loop, Whenever we find a population greater than our maximum, and this is, this is just algorithm standard here, when you're searching for a maximum, you start with a low value. And what's the low value depends on the kind of data. You have to know something about your data. Um, if we were trying to find the highest uh, liquefaction temperature for gases, we would be working in very, you know, minus zero degrees. And, um, and zero would not be less than the rest of them. When we're dealing with populations for states, you can pretty fairly assume that zero is less than the highest value. Okay, so um, here, whenever we find a population greater than the maximum, we wanna update our maximum and remember the state that had that. So let's just go through and make sure that we know how to index into the states here. So um, you don't have to, you don't have to do this this way, but some you may want to. Um, I'm going to introduce another variable called current state. And here, as I go through this array, I'm going to dereference is the word for this. I'm going to set current state equal to sub i. Okay, so each time I go through this loop, current state becomes the object which is at this index in the array. Okay, so first this one, then this one. And I can prove that to myself. I'm going to comment this out just to keep my output fairly small and do a console um, I'm also going to come down here and I think comment out at least that one so that we have a little less coming out on the screen over here so basically what I'm expecting now is that I'm going to see this and then inside the loop, I'm going to see something very similar when, when we console log each state as we walk through the array. Okay. And maybe just to keep that straight. Use a comma here. If you use a plus, you get some, well, actually, I guess I should show you what you get for all I'm doing a demo. Okay, um, if you use a plus on an object, what you get, what you see for output is that you are working with an object. Okay, so see this where I have current state. Let's make that a little prettier. And the only thing I get out is object, object. We're going to get into that later in this course, but in the meantime, if you really want to see what's in that object, the trick is to simply use a comma. And um, then for each current state, as you go through, you can see its name, population. Okay, so that's the difference between this. Here we're logging the whole array. And here we're logging each state as we work with it. Okay, and please don't feel self-conscious about instrumenting your code this way. Um, you're learning and getting the console log to show you what you're doing is, is one of the best ways to learn. Okay, so um, right now, I think I'm going to leave that line in here. And the next statement is, whenever we find a population, 
and this is the AIAN population, which is greater than the maximum value, we want to update both the maximum and remember the state. So um, finding whenevering is an if statement, right? So if current state, and we're looking at the AIAN population, and my little IDE is trying its very best to help me here, and so I don't type something wrong. So yes, you can type these, and then you'll get some of them wrong, or you can let the IDE help you, um, and you can choose the correct one from there, and it'll be typed right. So if the current population is greater than maximum, then we want to do two things. We want to remember the new maximum, as we are, do if we're just walking through an array of integers. And we have this variable up here that we're going to return. We want to go ahead and note that we want to temporarily, anyway, make the state we're going to return the current state. Okay, And the, the last state we remember is the one we're going to return. So um, let's just do one more thing here in terms of instrumentation. Um, and that is console log found new maximum um, plus. Okay. So again, I am I am instrumenting this code a lot, but after all, we're learning this step by step, right? And sometimes you need just need to know the code's working. So here. Um, we're logging each state as we go through. And then only if that state's population is greater than the maximum will we see this line come out. So let's go ahead and run. Okay. And we might even make this a little more noticeable, get excited about it. And uh, make it stand out a little bit more. So let me just run that again. Okay, so the first time we go through, we have a population of two and our maximum is zero. So we definitely found a new maximum. The second time through, we have a population of four and our maximum was two, so we found a new one. But as we go through the next two entries, neither of these is higher than our current maximum of four. Okay, so, we never see this line come out again, okay? And the last state we remember should be this one, S2, with a population of four. So again, you're gonna comment some of this stuff out, but bits are cheap and your time is not. So you really wanna get the code to talk to you and um, reassure you that it's working uh, so you can find defects early as opposed to think something's working and then suddenly get really confused. So um, maximum highest population state is, and again, we're going to use this comma so we can see the whole state. Okay, it's not cur state right? It's the last state that we remembered inside this if statement. So now if we run that, um, and we probably should be putting some, oh, hang on, I did that wrong. I want to do this right here before the return statement. And um, I probably want to just a plain old console log here, just to give us some space. Um, no, you don't need a 
You don't need an empty quote in there, empty quotes. You, this works, this works, but what's simpler is that works to give you a space. Okay, so um, I'm gonna say, I'm gonna run that again and see that we found a new maximum, we found a new maximum, we didn't, we didn't, and now we're about to return our highest population state. And then down here, we're console logging the result value, which is the value that was returned by this function. So now, if I go and um, comment out, I wouldn't delete these guys. I'd leave them in there because sometimes you need to come back later and, and make sure that you know it was working the way you expected. Because you may borrow this code from yourself and, um, and then find that you know, your new version isn't working and you begin to wonder if your old version was working. So um, don't delete a lot. Um, don't get partway through something and, and rip it out. Um, if you have a problem and you want to start over, I'd comment out the whole old function and write the new function below it and then be able to sort of compare and contrast. Um, the other thing I would do quite frequently is hit my auto format button so things can line up nicely. And now I should get a shorter output. Okay, so here's my population, here's my array after I've added these percentages, the number of states processed, and then the highest population is S2 with a population of four. So that's the end of this anagram. Um, I think I'm probably gonna skip the min uh, version. We've got, We've got a min version, which I think everybody can implement now. Um, I don't know. I think I may do this. I may do the lowest percentage state just to kind of review um, the, the property for that. Um, try to do that one quickly. And then I may end up going through these two. I'm not sure. So um, hope that helps. It's kind of um, tedious to walk through them this way, but, but I do hope you can see how I work. Um, you know, sometimes I know what code to write. Sometimes I really have to figure the code out as I go along. And you're probably in that second situation much more often than I am. And the way to figure that out step by step is to console log, get the code to talk to you, instrument it, okay? Add debugging statements. I say it all through all those ways, but it all means the same thing, which is start getting the code to talk to you through console statements, which you then comment out before you turn, you turn your work in. Okay.